Right now we're on uh, 112th Street between uh, Morningside and we're going to the Frederick Douglass, 8th Avenue. And actually these uh, buildings that are here are new, fully developed and the architecture is amazing. You know, when you really think about where Harlem has gone and where it's going. Ain't no way you could take this, honey. A lot of the young kids that um, did the Harlem Shake in that video, they, if you were to look at this building, words, and a lot on this block. So Harlem Shake is a, well, you guys know that, that's a staple, like. I did that wrong, but you know. We always show love in Harlem, you know, everybody, we're a community. So if you see somebody in the car, you know they're gonna give us, you know what I'm saying, show love. Look at this, look at this. Look what we, we have things to do in Harlem. Now we have art community that's taking their self to the next level. This one's the paint and pour. So group of people, group of friends get together, get some fucking drinks, have a good time. They could paint. Who knew that anyone could be a painter? Here it is. Look at that, look at that. That's Harlem right there. Yes. It's like one of the original soul food spots. People like DJ Khaled pull up here on a regular when he comes to Manhattan. He comes here. This is the spot. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Rakeem Walker, right here in Harlem on 114th and 8th Avenue outside of Melbourne. Big shout out to Melbourne. This is what I do, live music, all the time, all day long, from everywhere, all over the world, Brazil, Germany, Belgium, London. I mean, definitely Dear Irving on the Hudson, Soho House, Dumbo House. No, I do it at the, the Seville, Scott Center, Dirty Down in the Hamptons. You know what it is? RWP all day long featuring Gloria, Christopher Swift, Elijah Ahmad Muhammad, and then also DR King. I'll see y'all in a minute, all right? Oh, you know what it is. You were a baby of the 90s and freaking early 2000s, you know Wadley High School. Before it was like a charter school, this was a school that had a population of over like 4,000 kids in one building. There were five fours and it took up the whole block from 7th Avenue, I'm sorry, yeah, from 8th to 7th Avenue. Like low key, you had to be tough to go to Wadley. If you weren't tough or knew anybody on a block, you really couldn't. <laughs> Just go to Wadley. Like you could be from a whole nother neighborhood and go to Wadley. Little Africa. There, it's a it's a community of small business owners in Harlem who uh, came over from West Africa and different parts of Africa. But from Eighth Avenue to Fifth Avenue, you have probably over a hundred businesses. In uh, the New York Times in 1995, they had they wrote up an amazing article about what's happening in your neighborhood. And they talked about Little Africa and the West African entrepreneurs that were buying different storefronts, renting them and creating businesses in the neighborhood. So 116th Street from 8th Avenue to 5th Avenue in the early 90s had over 100 businesses. So what are these 
go towards? Are you are you the entrepreneur of these? Did you make these? Yeah. Your grandma made them? You're out here supporting your grandmother? Yeah. Hey Harlem! Listen, everybody knows the Harlem Mart. And if you don't, now you know. 116 between Lennox and Fifth. It's been around for probably since the late 80s, early 90s. I don't want to say early 90s, but this is one of the places where you can actually come and get handcrafted items. You can communicate with some of the really like OGs of the community that have been selling their, you know, their crafts and their entrepreneurial ways for over 10 years. And you can see different things here. Like when it comes to Afrocentric energy and just diaspora or West Africa and South Africa, you have a combination of all of that in this spot. And it was actually paying homage to Malcolm Shabazz. So this is now known as the Malcolm Shabazz Mart, not the Harlem Mart, the Malcolm Shabazz Mart. Look at this. Wow. It's hope in our community when you see young people giving their entrepreneurial spirit. It's so good to just see them doing that and making it happen. I mean, let's walk in a little bit. Don't you cry. You already know this is one of the top tourist locations when you come to Harlem. Like most people know. If you're looking for some genuine West African fashion and some just like, you know, you want to vibe out, they come here, they stop here, and drop today, drop. I mean, good job today, by the way. I've seen you out there. You're welcome. And just get a lot of community love. All these locals, they come here and they're entrepreneurs and they have their booth and they're just literally making it happen. One garment of clothing at a time. I mean, you can get anything you need in these places. Okay. If you're in Riverbank, you're either rollerblading, swimming, or ice skating. But if not, you're commuting right here on these beautiful, you know, pieces of land. You got your Hudson River right up here. It's always a beautiful essence, just a beautiful picturesque moment. And today is a very special family day, so a lot of our Aboriginal Americans, right? Black Americans are here celebrating Juneteenth and it's a beautiful sight. I'm trying to see if I could just jump in one of these barbecues real quick and get a burger. <laughs> if you don't got a nutcracker on Juneteenth, then you're doing the right thing. But I got one and we outside. I mean, come on, what can people Harlem's in this right now? Every warm, every in the sun. You hear 
hear me? Harlem, we are the trendsetters, the original trendsetters. You've seen the book Fashion in Harlem, Elle magazine, Bazaar, Vogue. They get a lot of their 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 niches from Harlem.